Now let's take a look at something new in ZBrush 2020, and these are the extractor brushes. The extractor brushes allow us to take a model which has an area of detail that we like, say for instance, this bumpy skin texture on the back of this alien's head. We can extract this, both the sculptural detail and the RGB color, and then we can apply that elsewhere as a, a, an alpha with a brush. So let's take a look at how we can do that now. We're just going to snap to a side view and we want to capture this area of detail here. If I press B for brush, X for extractor, you see we have three extractor brushes. There's the freehand extractor, extractor drag dot, and extractor drag rectangle. We'll start with the freehand extractor. Go to the alpha menu, and here you have a from brush button. This generates an alpha from a brush stroke, and you see the hotkey for that is G. So this only works with the extractor brushes. So while I'm in an extractor brush, I press G. Now my brush turns blue, and that just lets me know that this option is now turned on, and I can change my alpha, alpha width and my blur seam, which for this I will leave as they are. Now what I will do is I'll turn my draw size up, and I will click and drag and I'm just stroking along the area I want to capture, and you see it gives us this capture here along with the RGB color. So now we'll switch over to our ogre, and let's zoom into the side of the head here, and leaving the extractor brush activated, I will click and drag, and what this does is it adds both the sculptural detail as well as the poly paint. So it's trying to tile that texture extraction along the head. If I go to Subtool and turn Poly Paint off and turn RGB off on my brush, we can see this just as the sculptural component. So I can come in here and I can start to add that extracted detail. Now this is a projection brush, so it works best if you're looking straight down the axis that you want to um, apply this detail to. Let's turn my draw size down a little bit and I can actually scale this texture down as we get closer to the front of the head. Turn it down. Oops, that was the masking brush, turn it down once again, and we can create quite a fine little bumpy texture as we're coming down here into the forehead. Always remember rotating so we're kind of looking in the direction that we want to apply this, this detail. Let's rotate around to the front. And here we go, and I'm just stroking along transferring that detail right onto this new model. So this is a fantastic way if you've taken the time and effort to put an interesting texture on one Z tool, you can repurpose that onto another Z tool with a minimum of effort. You can just capture it and then reapply it. There we go. Now let's try one of the other brushes. Let's go back to our alien. Now that was the freehand version. Let's zoom in here, and let's do the drag rectangle version. So I do B for brush, X for extractor, and do extractor drag rectangle. Press the G key, and then click and drag, and that grabs whatever region I select. So you see up here at the top of the screen, it's going to start generating. Let's go. Let's, I think it might have actually just done that already. Let's do that. Let me turn that alpha off and then just extract again, just to make sure it's actually grabbing it. There we go, it just grabbed it very, very quickly. So here we have extracted color as well as texture detail. Now, if we come back to our ogre, go to another area here on the back of the neck, and we're still in the extractor brush, click and drag, and it will add this. Let me turn my focal shift down so it's got a harder edge on there. I can then apply this as a texture stamp. Maybe I want to scale this up a little bit. Let's turn the draw size up, focal shift down, and then we can just really scale this up and give a really big bumpy texture to the back here. And again, if I were to turn color back on, you see it is applying the color material, or the color as well. So we can use this as both a painting brush and a sculpting brush. So I'm going to turn the RGB off so we can see it a little bit clearer and come over here to the other side and go back to our alien. Now let's say I want to grab this area here. I'll do B for brush, X for extractor, and this time let's extract um, drag dot, or extractor dot. Press the G key, click and drag, and you see it's just extracted this area. Now this is a drag dot, meaning that if I come back over to our, our ogre, 
it's applying this as a drag dot stroke. I can turn my draw size up, my focal shift down, and if you look, I'm dragging and positioning this, and it's sort of projecting onto the surface until I let go. So I can reposition these as I move. So let's do one more. Let's go back to our alien. And let's do B for brush, X for extractor, and let's grab this extractor brush here, press the G key, and I'm just going to drag a strip across the forehead like that. And you see what it's done is it's grabbed a strip of forehead. So we come back to our ogre, and let's go back to the beginning of the undo history so we have a clean forehead here. Let's turn that poly paint off, and if you watch, if I click and drag, it will add those wrinkles that we just extracted. And I can put them in either direction. I can run them up the forehead or across the forehead. If we move down here to the neck, we could even repurpose these wrinkles into the neck area, just stroking along, just like this. So any type of detail that you fancy that you've created on your model, you can extract and then apply to a different mesh. And this is a very, very handy brush. It's I think one of my favorite things in ZBrush 2020. It also has another functionality that's uh, similar to the history recall brush where you can store an undo state to compare against. So when we're doing our extractions right now, sometimes you capture, if you look at this alpha here, we're capturing some of the big shape forms underneath. Perhaps we're in a situation where we don't want to do that. For example, I have a, a, a digital scan of a hand, which has a lot of nice knuckle detail. I want to capture just the mid-frequency and high-resolution details of the knuckle and apply it to another model. So I'll show you how we do that now. So here we have a digital scan of a hand. Now this has been processed to be a Z-tool. It actually has a, a Z-remesh or base mesh with multiple subdivision levels going up to level seven. So we'll let that update and you can see the details that we've got. Now what I want to do is I want to capture the wrinkles in these fingers and transfer them to another model. So I've got uh, you know a hand in progress over here for a creature and I'd like to put some knuckle wrinkles on there. So I've got this scan and I say well I'd like to actually extract this from the scan. Now the extractor brushes allow you to not only extract detail from a mesh as we've already seen, it allows you to set an undo state and then compare the mesh between the undo state that's stored and the current state where you're extracting the brush from. Now what that means is instead of generating the displacement map, as it were, from level one, all the way up to your highest subdivision level, it's allowing you to say, well, I only want you to capture the mid-frequency and high-frequency details. It's much like generating a displacement map from level 5 of 7 rather than level 1 of 7. So I'll show you what I mean. What I want to do, first off, is actually um, smooth out this detail so I can get all of my, um, uh, get all of the detail isolated in the subsequent undo history. So what I need to do is go to morph target, first and foremost, make sure I'm at the highest subdivision level and store morph target. Now I'm just going to step down a couple subdivision levels and start smoothing the details on this knuckle here. Now I'm gonna to go to my smooth brush, go to the brush menu, go to modifiers, and I'm going to press the shift key and take brush modifier and turn it down to negative 100. And what that does is it forces the smooth brush to only smooth the high frequency details and retain the low frequency. Just step back up to subdivision levels. And we'll do the same here. I just want to smooth away all this high frequency detail. Let's step down one subdivision level. Smooth all this back. Step up a subdivision level. And now there should be much less detail to deal with. There we go. I'll go back to brush and restore my brush modifier to zero. That's just my standard smoothing brush. And we'll smooth that out a bit. So we've now effectively removed all the details from this mesh. 
Now I'm going to go to Morph Target and click Switch. So you see my undo history here. When I switch back to my stored Morph Target, give that a moment, it adds an undo state. So what I can do now is I can step back one undo state where I'm at the highest subdivision level, but there is no detail. I'm going to go to B for Brush, X for Extractor, and select, uh, let's do Extractor Drag Rectangle. Now I'm going to control click on this undo state to store it. Now that undo state is stored in memory. I'm going to step back up to this undo state and I'm going to press the G key and I'm going to extract now. And what it's going to do, it's going to extract the difference between this state and this state. So let's click and drag like so. And that should capture that detail. So it's going to have to do some map extraction. And there is no color information on this mesh, so we're only going to get the alpha right there. Now the alpha is set to 128 by 128. I can go to my alpha menu, turn on from brush, and I can turn this all the way up to 1024. Let's zoom in here. And then I can do that extraction again. Oops, I just added. Click OK. Undo that. I can do that extraction again with a much higher resolution. So let's go ahead and give it a go first. I'm going to switch over to another model here. Here we've got our cave dweller creature. So I've got these hands in progress that I'd like to add more detail to. So let's zoom into those. And I'm just going to turn on solo so it's a little more reactive. Now I've got my extractor brush with my alpha. My alpha intensity, Z intensity is automatically set. I want to go in here and start applying those knuckle wrinkles. So if I click and drag, you see what we get is we get those knuckle wrinkles directly applied to these knuckles. So I'm able to very quickly go in here and start transferring sculptural detail from one model to another. So obviously I don't want everybody to have the same knuckle, but this is a really good example here how we're able to get that nice detail in there. I might take the standard brush now with uh, Alpha 1. And I think I've said a few times through these lessons, anytime I do a, a subtractive sculptural stroke, I always try and do a little additive stroke next to it. That just helps give it form, gives it the buckling of flesh. You don't have to overdo it, just give it a little bit of volume, just like that. There we go. Just makes a big difference. So those are the extractor brushes. Hopefully you found this video helpful and it helps illustrate how you can use these brushes to extract details from one mesh to then apply them to another. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next lesson.